Well, we're supposed to be playing in California today, but we're snowed in in Reno. And this guy always gives me crap about landing fast. And admittedly, this plane needs to land a little bit slower, so. With this pilot. Well, <laughs> you're right, I like to go fast. Sue me, I'm a fighter pilot. First of all, Trent, how did you decide on the placement of these guys on your Legend Cup? Uh, I think it was at 3% or 2% of the cord. Because that, that buck's kind of what I've heard about, like 10% cord. Because if you get them too far back, right. you're basically past the, the area of the separation, and right? If, if you're going to err on one side, you want to have them further forward than further back. Yeah, because if you put them too far back, again, it could be beyond the point where the air is separating and they're completely ineffective. Yeah. Whereas farther forward, the deeper you get into the stall, the more effective they are. But I can definitely touch down tail first, power off right now. And if I really want to drag it, my mains would be a foot in the air. KK? What is your input here? Uh, what I did is I copy Bob Breedens. Copy Bob Breedens. Yes, okay, well, <laughs> that's a good, good place to copy. And yet the snow is still there, so it really isn't great for bush wheels yet, because the beautiful places to go still have too much snow for... It's an avion that won 14 times the stall of Valdez. It's like a lot, right? And you guys know me. <laughs> I'm all about data, so let's set the baseline. This plane has a pretty clean stall break at about 40 knots. I might switch over to miles an hour because I'm flying with a bunch of cubs. We're gonna see if we can get it below 40 knots. One inch. Okay. That's how far back mine are. Uh, these might be too far forward on this profile. Just picturing, I'm not quite at critical angle of attack, but I'm pretty close. And then you could have VGs right here and they'd still be good. What were you guys gonna do? Two inch. inch. One inch over on his? Yeah. You should go to wherever but the we can change. Lights. We are going to change it with the landing lights. Yeah. yeah. We're just thinking, we just start right here. Here, okay. here is a different issue too. The cap is more flat here. So maybe I need to make this longer All because right. your wing start to be flat mm -hmm. after, after here. This is why you land so fast. Fly in B. We call I didn't realize you had <laughs> a, a symmetrical. <laughs> he's got a symmetrical airflow. Yeah, he can exactly. Get it's just as slow metric. upside down as you can upside down. It's it's not not no, it's not symmetrical. It's aerobatic. No, but maybe Steve. It does have here. camber on the underside. So not as much as you're talking. You can see it from here. This thing could benefit from a cuff. That would be sick. Tell Randy to build one. Okay. I think he just did. Randy, build a cuff for this. It might fly faster and land slower. Might not. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your tape, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Trent Palmer. I appreciate when you use my last name when you talk to me. Cool. That's what the people want. <laughs> <laughs> Pull it tight a little bit. That's in line right there. Yeah. The lights make your wing look cool. Yeah, I know. Bro. Bro. <laughs> you could go anywhere from where you're at to, I wouldn't go past the seam here. So you could move them an inch back and I don't think it's gonna make too much of a difference. I wouldn't go onto the main panel. You wanna no. be on the leading edge skin. Kip had them right behind the seam, so I'd like to be a forward of that. I, I definitely agree with that. So the question is, should we use the seam as the aft reference? I mean, could. Then, then it makes alignment easy. Yeah, KK, come stand up here. If you look at it, I mean, we could just go off this back seam and just make that the trailing edge of them. I believe it's gonna be more effective here because you're gonna lose here the, the board. This. With this one? With this one. This because one, yeah, it's gonna, yes. they're gonna pull you're back. Gonna, in. Here, I believe you're gonna lose the vortex. Instead of here, you came and uh, stand yeah. and, and try to think what I'm doing. Yeah, so you're saying the, the boundary layer where it separates is probably right about here. So we wanna be front of that. Hmm. The problem with this one is it might be losing the agitation yeah, by here. Yeah, shadow right there. Yeah, so this is safe. This is gonna be better. I, mean. I don't see a way that he's getting at a higher angle of attack to where that's not effective. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Like he would have to be like at such a high deck angle. It does make me think mine might be too far forward. You Trying know. to imagine the angle of the nose of the plane or the wind of the plane, mm -hmm. how high the nose is. Yeah in compare with the, the plane right now. Yeah, it, it you definitely- You can see forward or nothing. Um, I can still see forward. Um, it's about, the tail is, prob is probably about a foot or two below where it is right now. Okay. If it was me, I would put it off that, I'll have the second one. Don't you think, I think the too far forward on his airfoil, and this is pure. I don't know, I don't, I don't know. Really yeah, we're, it's a shot in the dark. <laughs> yeah. 
to do this right, you need to test, test and it, every and different it, size VG yeah. and every different spacing is going to be different. Right. And every different plane is probably yeah. a little different. Yeah. But I do think either of these are safe. This one will probably impact crews less, and I think it's probably going to be at the most effective range for your what we think your angle of attack is going to be. I will use like that line. Cool. Yeah, and that'll make alignment. Super yeah. Easy. We we have to use the templates upside down. That's the only thing, because we are not put it the template here, we're going to put it like this. These are the three. This should go in the flaps, but like this. Okay. Hmm? Yeah. Almost. All right. Yeah. This is a 150 mile an hour airplane, so I want to make sure these VGs don't come off. Probably some will, but we got just alcohol. Yeah. Think? I think they turned out pretty good. Trent, what do you think? How much slower am I gonna land? Somewhere between zero and <laughs> 10 knots slower. <laughs> <laughs> we will find out tomorrow. Thanks for you guys' help. Looking pretty good. I don't actually know the brand of these. A friend just handed them to me and there were no brand names, but they're we, land shorters. They're, they, we think they're land shorters because we had some of their same profile, but they're painted like a silver, which I thought looked, turned out pretty Good, kind of matches the silver. Get ready, get ready to go. Tick tock, now I'm watching the clock. Time stops and I'm ready to ride. All right, guys, out of the backcountry, back to Ben. So we're at 7,200 feet. On into the stall tests. First off, Flaps three, power off, level. So rich peak, lights are on, traffic is clear, slowed down, here comes one, two, three. I rarely fly with four notches of flaps, so we'll do pretty much everything. I'll do some tests with flaps four, but here's 50 miles an hour. Baseline was 46, so. Stable, I run out of elevator with flaps three at about 42 or so. So we're gonna recover that. Get the nose back up, and then we'll see what we can do with some power on. So we're level again, flaps three. Here comes some power. 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, and a bit of a stall break, but it's a lot more of a mush than before. And quite a bit slower. Let's see if we can get that even slower. So here comes flaps again, 50. Slowly adding in some power. 38, 37. With a verbal on a break at about 37. So 36, 37, that's quite a bit below 36. So good, almost 10 miles an hour slower. Let's turn around, I apologize for the light. Let's go ahead and try this with flaps four. There's flaps four, this is gonna blank out that horizontal stabilizer. A little bit of power, a little bit more wobbly. Power fully off, then the nose just drops. So let's break that, try it again with a little bit of power on, and that was about 42. So it's definitely more effective at flaps three. Give us some air over the stabilizer, and burble, a bit of a break at about 41. So yeah, flaps four. Not sure what I'd use it for, so there's flaps three again. Go ahead and try to maintain 40 miles an hour level. 38, 37, level. 37, just rudders now. 35. Let's just try to hold this. 36. I mean, look at my deck angle. 20 plus degrees nose high. And that information would have been good to know. That's too much effort. Trim. So we are dead level at 36 miles an hour. Oh, there's a little bit of a break, correcting with rudder, letting it drop. Those features are awesome. What I'm noticing is, 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 this, is the plane talks to you a lot more. Kind of like the F-15 where you can definitely feel the burble start to approach on the wings, first high frequency, and then the burble becomes more pronounced, lower frequency, the closer you get to the stall. 
and uh, I'm noticing that. So that is just so nice to have. And the stall is less, less of a event. It's a lot more mushy. So let's get behind the power curve, start to slow. There's 57, flaps three. We're just gonna do a approach to stall with some power on. 45, 40, power on. Try to recover something, get a bit of a break. Oh yeah, I could, rec I, could I could power out of that. I didn't even have to release back stick pressure. I could power out of it. I'm pretty lightweight now, so that's definitely worth noting. And we're talking indicated miles per hour. Got to power out of that thing. Ah, <laughs> right full right rudder wants to go left. All right, easy back stick pressure and we recovered so that is just too much fun i've got so much more authority what i need to do now is go out to like alvar desert or some playa somewhere and just practice this like two feet off of the ground and just get good at like controlling my sink rate with throttle and also the other thing i need to do is adjust my horizontal stabilizer incidence leading edge down a little bit more i brought it up to adjust the center lift on this airplane and i'm realizing that for stall. See, look, I'm full picked aft. Powering out of this. <laughs> 230 degrees nose high. Whee! I'm mid throttle, too. I mean, I don't want to get into a dangerous situation, but man, this is just oh, so nice. These VGs just absolutely a joy. To fly, but again, this is high altitude. We've we've mushed down to 6,100 feet, so I just cannot wait to see what this can do closer to sea level, a little higher density altitude. But these are the density altitudes I'm going to be landing at in uh, in Idaho this summer. So let's try one more for S and Gs. 47. Start easing in some power and holding the deck angle of 20 degrees. Mid throttle, maybe a third throttle in, and I'm just happy. Just dancing on the rudder pedals, keeping myself wings level. Hanging on the blades at 34 and a half. And there was a break. I got the nose up a little too high. So, But yeah, I could feel the airplane. Feel the buffet even in the rudder pedals. All right, let's try with no flaps. Power's going to have to come in later, but more aggressively. Sticks pegged all the way aft. And it just wants to hang on the blades at about 40. No flaps. All right, so let's try flaps two. Get that nose up, it wants to break it at about 39. So I think that flaps three is the sweet spot in this airplane, which is kind of what I've figured prior to the VGs. Guys, I'm super happy. I'm going to leave this one here. I think I've pretty much covered everything. I hope I did anyway. But uh, but yeah, so again, you know, you, you saw the position of the of the uh, VGs on the wing, but uh, I think I think we kind of nailed it. Um, I don't know if it needs to be any further aft. Thanks again to Trent and KK for their expertise and their help. This is a kind of a game changer and in no way are my skills honed at all yet. So the, the plane is getting dialed in next thing are fairings and those fairings will help with the top, the high end but they're actually going to hurt me at the low end because it'll it'll add even more slipperiness to this airplane it's steve till next time you're cleared to rest